Well, let's start here and do our loop again. In the way the town square, you see Jonas and the dog running around together outside. Come here, boy. Caesar. He named his dog Caesar. That's how it's spelled. Yes, that's how it's spelled. I was like, that's how it's spelled, right? It looks like someone finally got a bath. Oh, yes, you did. And now you're a beautiful boy. Oof, oof. Have you given him a name yet? Oh, right. You forgot to give him a name? No, I just forgot to mention it. You eat meat, Caesar. <laughs> He's settling in pretty well, I think. I'll take him down to the festival site later today and introduce him to everyone. You're going to come with me everywhere I go, right, boy? Oof, oof. Everywhere? Looks like you've got a great new friend. A new best friend. And my crew members also have dogs, so they've been helping me figure things out. These days, my first pet, so I've learned a lot. That new love charm you made must have been pretty potent. I care about people and stuff. But I've never felt this way about something before. Like, I've always liked animals, but having an actual pet feels so different. I can't speak to pets, but witches are pretty close to their familiars. Yeah, they're kind of like a partner, right? Yep, yep. Well, except when... Uh... They tell you not to eat strange fungus, but to be honest, I did it anyway, and maybe he was right. It didn't have much in terms of magic potency, but it certainly caused other rather potent problems. Ramsey didn't come near me for almost a week. I mean, it does sound like Ramsey was trying to help you. The other day after I gave Caesar a bath and stuff, I started thinking about when I yelled at my crew again. And I started feeling sad and angry at myself. Caesar came up to me and he just put his head in my lap and I calmed down. Reminded me that even though that one bad thing happened, my crew helped me, uh, helped me a lot with Caesar. So if they aren't still mad at me, maybe I should stop being mad at myself. Caesar, you're pretty powerful for just being a pet. Woof woof. Ah, uh, Scratch Caesar behind the ears. Woof woof. Oh, you give Caesar pets? Maybe he's alright. You hear that, Caesar? The witch says you're alright. I knew you'd come around to him. Huh? You wanna go for a walk? I suppose we could do that. Evie, do you wanna come with us? Let me think. Sure. Great, let's go. We should definitely go on more walks together with Caesar. I think he's taken a liking to you. And I guess I've taken a bit of liking to you too, boy. Woof, woof. We should probably walk you home now. We still need to go to the festival ground meet everyone. Yeah, that sounds good. Jonas and Caesar walk you home. Well, here we are. Good luck with me, everyone today, Caesar. I'm sure he'll get along with the crew just fine. Yeah, I think so too. Catch you later. Woof, woof. Venus? Huh? Venus? Jonas does seem to love Caesar. It looks like he's working on being kinder to himself, too. Alright then, that's another thing to know in the grimoire. I'm getting better at naming planets. <laughs> uh, Mel. Talk to Mel. Mel, please tell me you took a nap. Please let Mel be better. Please be let Mel be better. You approach Mel's house and gen knock gently on the door. Come in. Enter the home and see Mel curled up on the couch with some soup. You know she's surrounded by flowers and other foods, too. Don't I look in a sad state? Sorry. As we said at the full moon ritual, it's not entirely your fault. You're not the only one who got carried away. I got so worked up about everything needing to be perfect. About making sure everyone else is having a good time. To be at my best, I need to rest. So you're not mad at me? Of course not. I'm madder at myself than anyone. Tell me, do you think... Do you think I'm boring? Huh? I think most people are boring. Can people be exciting? Not really. <laughs> Not really. I mean, I did get to see what happens when magic goes wrong. That's an exciting experience. Though potentially not a good one, but I wouldn't call it boring. Why do you ask? Seems kind of out of the blue. Because I, I think everyone likes Jonas more than me. You're jealous of Jonas. <laughs> I am. People are always laughing with him. More like Adam. And he's always getting invited to parties. Do you like parties? Uh, I'm too old for that stuff now, but people just seem to like him. And you don't think people like you? Of course not. I'm the one managing budgets. And who gets angry over toilets? And who has to tell Jonas and his crew to hurry up? Everyone hates me. You retake a look around the room. You notice all the food, flowers, and get well cards. Did Jean get the, all the stuff for you? No, but he made the soup I'm eating. Then where is all of it from? Various people from the village, my co-workers at the town hall, etc. You hear about me feeling down, said all of this over. I don't know where they found the time with everything that needs to get done. 
Sure, it seems like a lot of effort. I know I wouldn't do that unless I liked someone, like, a lot. So you're saying people like me? I think so. Maybe you're like my gran. She's always scolding me, but she's also always teaching me too. And even though she's a little stodgy, she, she has taught me a lot of neat spells. And without her, I wouldn't be here right now. I don't know where I'd be, if I'm completely honest. I'm trying to say that you were necessary, Mel. If everyone were a goofball like Jonas, nothing would get done. There won't be any of this world at all. And what's more boring than that? Mel falls silent and looks around the room. You're right. I'm surrounded by the villagers' love right now, aren't I? Mel looks down at her bowl of soup. And Jean's love, too. What did Jonas bring you? Mel's eyes are around the room. Oh my god, that rat! <laughs> His sister's sick from stress and he hasn't come to see me. Knowing Jonas, he probably didn't want to bother. Suddenly, there's a knock at the door. Who could that be? Come in. Jonas walks in. Hey, sis. Perfect timing. What are you doing here? You said you weren't feeling well. Actually, I'm feeling a lot better right now. I think some rest has done me good. It's about time you tried then to have all that magic. No offense, Evie. No, I think we might have all... We might have overdone it. Anyway, I thought I'd come over and see if you need anything. Over here. Nope, everyone out. What? I just got here. I need to rest to ensure I'm in tip-top shape by tomorrow. This festival isn't going to agonize itself. So come on, get out. Get out. Mel shoes you and Jonas out of the house. Well, uh, I guess I'll head back to work. Jeez, seems like she's on the mend anyhow. Yeah, I think she'll be alright. <laughs> Knowing Mel should be up and at him by tomorrow. I should get going though. Bye. Sounds like Mel struggles with finding balance in her life. Realizing people do care about her wellness. Also, Venus. Venus? Maybe Mel should incorporate things att attributed to Venus in her life. Let me write that down in my grimoire. Ruth. Ruth has something, right? Yes. Welcome to Ruth's home. After the full moon ritual, you wonder what state she'll be in. Knock on the door. Amy, how good to see you. Are you here to deliver my spell? Yep. Yep, it's right here. Um. I. Memory. Why am I not. Am I blind? Overcome. Safety. I don't. Confidence. I don't. I can't. Turn the page. Ah, there it is. <laughs> Your hand, the memory, and sense to Ruth. Yes, this should help. What are you trying to do? You know what I mentioned the few full moon ritual? You're not being neighbor and going traveling? Yes. So you intend to do that? Or you're not? No, I am, but... Much as the idea of exploring the world excites me. I never really love Flora, so the idea also terrifies me. I see. <laughs> I have a spell for that, I feel that, just go for it. I feel that. Why pressure yourself to go out when you know you can be comfortable right here? Yes, I think. I think that's precisely it. I am comfortable in Flora, even with my desire to leave. It's strange. I wish I could just take it with me wherever I go. Is that what the memory spell is for? Mm-hmm. Before I use these incense, I thought of taking a walk. Would you care to join me? Hmm. A walk sounds nice. Let's head out, then. You and Ruth head out to your walk. On your walk around Flora. First, you come to the lake. I have many happy memories of my daughter and Nisha here. Both of them are so similar. They live running and playing in the water and finding small litter creatures. I still listen to the crickets and the frogs when I come here. The sound takes me back, right back to their childhoods. I wish I could take this lake with me wherever I go. Hmm. Hmm. Ruth just might have given you an idea. Yes, yes. You gave her the memory incense, which she can burn when she gets home, but... What if you had another tool to help her keep her dearest memories close? Ruth? Yes? What if I told you I had a tool you could potentially use to take the like, with you? Is this some kind of experimental magic? No, not at all. I've used it before, and it doesn't require magic at all. It might even improve your ability to use memory incense. But it's not magic? No, it's more of a sensory tool to help you focus and remember details. Interesting. What does that entail? You're pretty an avid walker, so you might as well... I might already be doing some of these things. It's just it's being very mindful of your surroundings. When I find myself in a place I want to remember, I use, I use my thoughts to create a sort of snapshot. You can do this by focusing on one at a time. Does that make, all make sense? You're right. It is something I've somewhat done on my own, on my walks before. I've never actively tried using my memories to create, my senses to create memories, but I think I'll be willing to try. Great. How about on this walk we do some practice then? 
That sounds like a good idea. Since we're already at the lake, let's try focusing on one of our senses here. Let's start with... Smell. So I focus on what I can smell? Yep, I think closing my eyes will help with this. Okay. Ruth closes her eyes and takes a deep breath. I think I can smell the lake. Maybe it's the allergy? It has an earthy smell, but it's not bad. I can also faintly smell what Jean's baking in his cafe. But there's also the smell of cut grass. This is a lot to take in. Yeah, it can be. Don't worry about trying to hold on to everything just yet. I find it usually takes a few sessions to complete a snapshot. That makes sense. I think I'd like to make our way to the forest next. You and Ruth walk to the forest. I always come here when I feel like hiding from the world. I used to be afraid of these woods. When I was a little girl, I played hide and seek at night with here with friends. I lost my way while looking for a hiding place, and suddenly all the trees looked like monsters. Fortunately, my screams left my friends find me. That's awful. It was at the time, but then I became more determined to know these woods. And now we're good friends. Ready to practice one of the senses? Sure. How about... Uh... Touch. Am I supposed to walk around and touch things? Sure, unless there's things you shouldn't touch, like animals or poison ivy. Try focusing on how the ground feels beneath your feet, and they are against your skin. Okay, I think I understand. Ruth starts to walk around the woods. She puts her hands on a tree trunk, and then on the forest floor. Everything is so warm. You can tell it's alive, but it's also slightly damp to the touch. That's very good. I think you're getting the hang of this. Thank you. I think this is a good exercise. It's also very relaxing. Sort of like meditation. <laughs> yeah, it is. I think I know where I'd like to go next. It's to my secret spot. Oh, I can't see Ruth's secret spot? Only if you know about it. Follow me. Ruth takes off on a brisk walk through the woods. You can hardly keep up. You notice the elevation is rising. Now you know why Ruth is in such great shape. How much further? You'll see. You have to puff your way up. Ruth seems fine. Come to the sun clearing. We're here. Wow. <gasps> After you catch your breath, you look out. You can see all the flora from here. And more. How far up did we just walk? Isn't it wonderful? This isn't my secret spot, if I'm completely honest. Our previous witch showed it to me. I wanted to try focusing on one of my senses up here. I think that's a great idea. How about you try... I feel sight would be best. Okay. Ruth takes a deep breath. Everything looks so tiny, yet you can tell it's so full of life. I can see the mountains, the beach, the village, and these lands, and the lake, maybe? These landscapes are all so different, yet they all belong together in a valley. If you were to take one away, it'd somehow be incomplete. I wish I could stay here forever, but I know I can't. I know I have to leave, even though I'll be back. When I return from my troubles, this is the first spot I'll visit. Ruth turns and looks at you. Thanks for coming up with me, up here with me, Evie. Of course. This has, been, this has been the best workout I've had in a long time. Fortunately, going downhill is much easier. Come on, let's go. You and Ruth make your way back down the mountain to her home. I think I'll have to practice that sensory technique more later. This might sound strange, considering I just asked you for a way to remember Flora, but... I wish I had something to help me cleanse the space, too. Like, as a final way of letting go and preparing myself to move on. That makes sense. Of course, kind of like taking what you want and then moving on. Yes, I think that's exactly it. Of course, I'm not adding, asking for anything extra. These memory, these memory incense should really help. Well, I think it's back to festival preparations. I've been away for too long already. I'll be on my way then too. Bye. Something to help you say goodbye and move on, but in a good way. Maybe a uh, besom could help with that. If we're sweeping away energies to make space for new ones, I'm pretty sure I saw a small broom that you. Menias I could use. I wonder if that would be a good idea. So is this our first look at the uh, possibility of an enchantment? Sorry guys, I was going for entirely too long with not having um, liquids. Especially with Ruth's voice. Back to Nisha. Nisha probably still hates me. You walk up to Nisha's home and knock on the door. Evie, I know I hear you. You want to talk about what happened? Yeah. I'm all ears if you want. I appreciate it. Those people avoid the subject to write off as in my head. But I guess you gotta bear witness, so you don't know. You know I didn't make a mess of things. How about going to our usual spot and talking about it? Sure, let's go. 
You and Nisha walk towards the beach. She seems distant and doesn't say a word the entire walk. You arrive at the beach and you sit on a couple of rocks. So... So... First, you have to promise not to laugh. I'm a witch. If there's one person who's going to listen to someone about feisty spirits, it's me. I know, it's just the one person who ever believed me was the village witch. But I'm more used to people not believing me. What kind of spirits are they, exactly? The last witch called them Fibbly Nibblies, but I don't know if that's a real thing or not. I've never heard of them, but that doesn't mean anything. Spirits aren't exactly my forte. They got me into so much trouble as a kid. They'd put on, they'll pull on whoever was sitting in front of me to the hair. They'd knock supplies off shelves. They'd even eat other kids' lunches. Then I'd yell at them to stop and get scolded for shouting in the middle of class. I really thought I was acting out for attention, but that wasn't the case. I knew everyone would think of it as weird if I told them the truth, so I hid it. And that just made things worse. If the witch believed you, how come she didn't give you a cleansing spell? She tried, but Grian once again believed that everything was fine. She thought I'd outgrow it. Wait, wait, I haven't. The witch left soon after that. It's a good thing I'm here then. Uh, time to banish. No, no. See, the problem is they're, you're my friends. You're your friends? Yes, but they ruined your childhood. Yeah, they got me into a lot of trouble, sure, but they're the ones who introduced me to art. And we used to get along most of the time. Just people don't understand them or me. Instead of listening to me, people would be, would be just, be like, just stop, which made things worse. Okay, now I'm lost. This is trying out the story time with Nisha, isn't it? And you notice Nisha fidgeting a lot with her hands. You must be feeling nervous, though. Here. Do you want a hug? Mm-hmm. You give Nisha a big hug. It looks like she's calmed down a little bit. This is hard to talk about, but here it goes. I'm home alone one day, as I usually am because Bran works a lot. I hear this weird chattering coming from outside, so I go and I take a look. Except I don't see anything. Then I hear it again, but a little further off. So I follow it, but every time I think I've caught up, it's just a little further away. Eventually, the chattering leads me to an, the old art studio. Ran boarded it up after my parents died since they ran it. I hear the chattering again, except it's coming from inside this time. I pry at least board off one of the windows and go inside. That's when I see everything. Canvases, brushes, paint, charcoal, and more. It's like stumbling into Wonderland. Every time I think I found everything, their chattering led me to more supplies. Before I knew it, it's night and I've created all this stuff. When I hear Grand and group of villagers enter the studio, it ends up they've been looking for me. I hide, thinking I'm in trouble. But no, Grand is just happy I'm safe. I swear, I saw a tear go down her face as she looked around the art studio. The only tear I've ever seen from her. She then declares that the village will reopen the studio. From then on, I spent most of my time there. And the fiddly nibblies? I chatted with them every day while I worked, bouncing ideas off them and stuff. Without them, I wouldn't be the artist I am today. Wow. I want to meet them. I never ever introduced any of them to anyone before. They tend not to like anyone else, though. They get jealous easily. Do you think there's anything you can do to help me, or rather, us? As I mentioned before, spirits are my support day. And you also want them to stick around. I'll have to think about it. I wonder if they're mad I left for school. Could be. Misha stands up and takes a big breath. Well, that's my story then. Now you know all about the Philly Nibblies. Are you going to head back to the studio? <laughs> yeah, I should probably get to cleaning. You should have hopefully calmed down. They tend to do after a big blow up. If there's anything I can do, make sure to let me know. Yeah, will do. Well, I should get going now. Thanks again for the chat. Sure, anytime. Oh, Pluto. Pluto. I just plan of connection and boundaries, especially in relation to the spirits and stuff. Not surprising considering Isha's strained relationship with the Fibbly Nibblies. Yeah, incorporating something associated with Pluto could help Isha. I'd write that in my grimoire. 